Be sure to go to FlipSideGaming.com and use promo code 6 for 10% off on orders over $10. Do the same with the Grizzly Gentleman, 10% off at checkout on your fantastic beard products. Or you could shop via the TCG Player affiliate link in the description down below to help support the show. And last, but of course not least, you can go to Grey Viking Games with the uh, affiliate link below to pillage some sweet arena codes. What's up, Planeswalkers? Thirk6 back with some more Kaldheim spoiler preview discussion, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, this is A lot of this is going to be loaded in on a single day. I don't know which is which. Q. <laughs> My channel, I'll do what I want. Uh, anyway, Giant Ox. We got a good old-fashioned 2 minute zero six. 6 um, It can crew vehicles. Or no, no, it's not, it's not that it can. It has to. Wait. Is it... I don't know if Scryfall is being weird. Or if this is a day one errata. I I legitimately don't know. These these are different. Typically, it's going to crew vehicles with its toughness. Whether or not you can or it has to, I don't know yet. <laughs> um, that's, that's interesting. I wonder if that was initially a translation difference and Scryfall just hasn't updated. Because as worded on this card, you have to use the, the toughness. Why is, why is my freaking audio just so loud? Eh, it's a two minute zero six. Like, do you play this in Arcades? No, not Arcades. Sorry, um, because Arcades cares about Defender, and this isn't. This doesn't have Defender. But do you play this in like Big Ass, like Hotly Deck or what? High Alert. Do you play that in this? Maybe two minute zero six. I don't know if you play those. Raiders Carve. Three mana for a 4-4 four, four, Crew 3 vehicle. Uh, when it attacks, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put it on the battlefield tapped. It's interesting. It's an explorer ship. It's, it's cool. I don't, I don't care about it. Hode Spell Cleric is a 1 mana 1-1 one, one human cleric with Vigilance. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if it was the second spell you cast this turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. Oh, okay. So I didn't expect this. So we have seen some of the um, second spell matters cards that want to look at the second spell being cast. This one cares about being the second spell cast. And it is only one mana, so it facilitates that pretty well. Um, and this might be good in white weenie. Right, like on turn one, you play a one mana two power creature. On turn two, you play another one mana two power creature, and then you play this, which is also a one mana two power creature. On turn three, you play like um the the Lord. Uh the the triple pip, the triple white pip lord. And you attack with uh what's that? Three six nine power on turn on turn three. On turn two, you attack for two. On turn three, you attack for nine. Is that good? I, I don't know. This has Vigilance as well, so it can also block against aggressive decks. Maybe? Maybe this is playing White Weenie? I don't know. Mammoth Growth. Uh, we, we get another growth spell with uh, the set mechanic. Three mana for an instant. Target creature gets plus four, plus four until end of turn. Or Fortell for... It's on rate for the Fortell. It's an instant, which is nice. Um... Oh, ooh. I could see an interesting deck that has, like, Mammoth Growths and a bunch of other, like, good pump spells. Um, um, gosh, what's that, what's that red-green one? Uh, it's the split cost, Colossal, uh, Collision Colossus. You have, like, that, um, you have this, you have any other cards that are just, like, really good rate, and then, like, for these, you foretell them, and then you just, essentially, you just wait until you can attack with, like, one big creature and just destroy your opponent. It's funny, it's probably just a meme. Demonic Lightning, uh, three mana instant, Demonic Lightning, builds four enemies to target a creature or a planeswalker, foretell on rate. Well, it's a common, it's probably pretty decent and limited. A creature planeswalker, yeah. That's probably about it. Yeah, that's probably about it. Excuse me, what is this word? Voicher Bestmung? Nope, I cannot speak German. Burning Rune Demon. First of all, this art sick. Wait, what the fuck is going on in the background, dude? 
There's a skull with like a snake on it. Whatever. Six mana, six, six, flying demon berserker. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for exactly two cards, not named this, um, that have different names. If you do, reveal those cards, an opponent chooses one of them, put the chosen card into your hand, the other into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. Notably, the graveyard is often your second hand. So let's say I'm playing a deck that happens to use reanimation. Let's say I reanimate Burning Room Demon. Then the two cards I get are... Uh, what, hmm, maybe there's some there's some sort of card in Historic right now that uh, can reanimate. It can also reanimate from the graveyard. Hmm, what is that? What is that card called? No, seriously, I, I've actually forgotten. Uh, why am I forgetting all these cards now? I can see the art in my head. It's a five. It's a five mana card. It, it's the dude who's like, let me in. <laughs> Whatever. I. Don't, it flashes back for three and a white. Why can't I remember this card? Whatever. You, you get that and you get another reanimation target. Either they give you um, the reanimation target. And they put the, the reanimation spell in the graveyard where you can use it to reanimate something else that's popping in your graveyard. Or they give you the reanimation spell and you put the other target in the graveyard. Uh, it's a really cool card. Um, this is also kind of... Uh, I might try this in Kalia of the vast the edh deck because then you can also just like get two very annoying uh creatures for your opponents to deal with and either they deal with it or they don't and they die. <laughs> two this is two cards this isn't even two creatures this is two cards you could also just like put this in um in moldrotha edh and just grab two anything essentially it's like oh you're gonna put it in my graveyard that's fine Th that's my second hand this card's sick. I like this card. Run Amok. This is a reprint, but uh, it's a reprint that I think is quite interesting. Uh, has it not been... Yeah, it hasn't been printed since Dominaria. But uh, this this being in standard scares me alongside the, the Mammoth thing, potentially. Uh, you could potentially do some like really dumb things with the Mammoth plus uh, this. Crush the Weak is a 3-mana sorcery. Uh, it has Foretell. It's commensurate, whatever. Uh, cross the weak deals two damage to each creature. If a creature dealt damage this way, would die this turn. Exile it instead. Uh, there's two damage to each creature. It is a sorcery. Yeah, since it's a sorcery, even though like you can foretell it for, and then like cast it for one. I just don't think this is going to be good enough. Because, like, if you want a three... Like, if you want a two and a red board wipe, you're, you're going to want it to be instant. You got the dragon thing, and then you got the, the pirate one. I can't think of names right now. I can see the art for both of those cards. I can... I know exactly what those cards do. And I know the mana cost. I can't think of their names. Am I dying? I'm just getting legitimately scared now. Starnheim Unleashed is a four mana sorcery. Create a four, four white angel warrior creature token with flying and vigilance. If this spell was foretold. Excuse me, what? Sorry, uh, if the spell was foretold, create X of those tokens instead. Four mana for a 4-4 four, four flying Vigilance. This is a mythic. I just want to point out that this card is a mythic. <clears throat> it's a mythic, by the way. I mean, like, Fertel is XX1. So, like, theoretically, um, if you pay two for this and then you pay um, one for each of the X, that's five total. But it's a cross turns if you pay uh two for the x that's two four six seven but you get eight power if you pay three that's uh three six eight nine but you get 12 power right so it gets better the more mana you put into it i mean it's probably a fine card it's just not exciting and i don't i don't even know if this is if this is playable 
four mana. Is this playable or not? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm talking standard historic. Limited, this is obviously... Limited, this is insane. This card's nuts in limited. But standard and historic, I, I, I don't see this card being good. Dual strike. Red, red, instant. Uh, foretell uh, for two. Uh, well, foretell is just red. Whenever you cast your next instant or sorcery spell with converted mana cost four or less this turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. Um, I've never liked these preemptive spell doublers. When you cast your next and sorcery spell, convert mana cost four or less this turn, copy that spell. Yeah, I've never liked the um, the preemptive ones. It's nice that this only costs one, essentially. So, like, on turn five, you can cast a really good uh, a really good four, four CMC spell. But, like, what would that even be? <laughs> what would that even be? I guess maybe you could... I guess maybe you could, uh... Me pay. Maybe. Because this is always going to be CMC 4. So what you do is you foretell this, and you foretell this. And then you can pay this for a decent amount. But you also cast this, and then you have a lot more angels. And then your opponent board wipes, and you're down two cards. Uh, I don't know. Uh... Cast your next instant source of spell on the cost. I, I I don't I don't love this card. Basalt Ravager. Four mana, four two. This is essentially a flame tongue kabu. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it's a giant wizard. Uh, it deals X damage to any target where X is the greatest number of creatures you control that have a creature type in common. So at the very least, this is going to deal one damage. Because it, it itself. Uh, it only hits Oh, it's any target. Okay, this is actually sick. It's not constructed viable, but it's definitely meme viable uh, because of the the giant that makes your giants deal double damage, essentially. Frostpire Arcanist. Frostpire, interesting. Five mana, two five giant wizard. The spell costs one less to cast if you control a giant or a wizard. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for an instant or sorcery card with the same name as a card in your graveyard. Hashtag garbage and EDH. Put it into your hand and then shuffle your library. So potentially four mana for a two five that functionally rebuys something. Hmm. Eh. 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 Weathered runestone. Two mana artifact, non-land permanence. Uh, excuse me, non-land permanent cards in graveyards and libraries can't enter the battlefield. Players can't cast spells from graveyards or libraries. So what I want to do really quick is graph cage. So graph digger's cage is creature cards in graveyards. Non-land permanent. Players can't cast spells and players can't cast spells. Literally, if, if you're just focusing on this, right, this is not changing, right? The only difference here is that for one more mana, non-land permanent cards, instead of just creatures, that takes it from one type to in introducing artifacts, enchantments, planeswalkers. Arguably, more important. I've seen people legitimately say that this is not worth running over cage. Also, cages are rare. I recognize that in some circumstances, that one mana is going to make a difference. Being able to double spell, for example. Being able to, um, on turn five, play Karn, grab this out of your sideboard, and, and play it. But in that, in that second circumstance, you run both. But also, like, this, this is just great. Right? Like, the fact that this hits three extra things is uncommon. I don't see how this doesn't, like, at, le at least live alongside Grabdrigger's Cage. Right? Like, the difference between one and two mana when you're going against goblins and you just want to make sure that they, they don't goblin you out, they're not going to goblin you out on turn one or turn two. They're going to goblin you out on turn three. 
they, they need turns one and two to set up. So having to pay this on turn two instead of turn one, like, eh, I don't know why people hate this fucking card. Oh, they don't hate it. They, they don't. They don't seem to think it is good. Pilfering hawk. Hawks don't pilfer. That's magpies. Um, two mana, one two, flying snowbird. Uh, pay a snow and tap, draw a card, then discard a card. It's a looter. It's a bird looter. Uh, it's it's fine. Dread Rider is a six mana, three seven spirit knight. Cool art. Um, two mana, tap, exile a creature card from your graveyard. Target opponent loses three life. Um, we've seen a few other things uh, want to exile cards from your own graveyard, which is very interesting. Now just using the... Uh, I, I'd like to see more use of the graveyard as a resource, not so far as like it's a second hand, but it's just like more like delve effects, right? Like you're just getting rid of cards in your graveyard to pay extra costs. Uh, I, I like I like that. We see all with like escape as well. Escape, except uh, many escape cards are too good. Cough. Squash is a five mana instant. This spell costs three less to cast if you control a giant. Squash deals six damage to target creature or planeswalker. Um, essentially, this is a two mana instance that deals six damage to a creature or planeswalker. Um, even then, it's probably not great. I'd probably just rather run uh, tempo e giants. Not not tempo giants, but I'd rather just like run good giants, such that like I don't care about what creature you have. I'm going to kill you because my giants are huge. Shepherd of the Cosmos, six mana, three three angel warrior. When she enters the battlefield, return target permanent card with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Foretell, for uh, three and a blue. So, her cost is reasonable. Um, the fact that it is still uh, six, it's it's on rate as it were. Uh, the three three is not not nice. Enters the battlefield, return target permanent card with converted mana cost. Uh, you can get lands, which is nice. It's not just creatures, which is nice. Two mana or less is sad. I mean, let's let's get out of the way. This is no Sun Titan. Yeah, it's probably just not worth it at all. Yeah, very sad. Nice art. Jaspira Sentinel is a 1-mana, one 1-2 one Elf Rouge. Uh, reach, tap, and tap an untapped creature you control. Add 1-mana of any color. Uh, I guess fixed... Fixed Lenore Elf? Tap an untapped creature you control. So yeah, in order... So like, Lenore Elf... Wait, these people are firing. Why aren't you firing? <laughs> Um, Lenore Elf, you play it on turn two, you can, you can pay, play a, a single three drop creature. With this, on turn two, you could play a one drop creature and then tap this and that one drop creature and play a two drop creature. Um, honestly, it's garbage. Infernal Pet is a three mana imp. To two, two. Try, I'm really trying to figure out how big this is. I got nothing. I'm. I have no idea how big this is. It looks like large, but I feel like it probably isn't. Anyway, whenever you cast your second spell each turn, uh, whenever you cast your second spell each turn, I'll put a one-one counter on an infernal pet, and it gains flying. Why does it gain flying? Does it put the wings on? I don't get it. And the last one for this video: Elder Leaf Mentor is a four mana three two elf warrior. Uh, when it enters the battlefield to create a 1-1 one, one green elf creature token. It's a it's a 4-3 worth of stats for 4. Not good. I mean, it's an elf, but uh, other than limited, where you're probably not even picking this very highly, pro probably probably not great. Anyway, I have a P.O. Box. Send me things. Do it, cowards. I also have a Patreon. Uh, I'd like to thank my lovely patrons. They're all great people. But uh, Fogwin, Malik, and Balatar are especially great people. Uh, they're they're what I like to call amazing people. If you'd like to become amazing, or even just great, I guess, um, you find that in the description down below. Hope, of course, you enjoyed this video. If you did like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. And of course, until next time, all be one.